everywhere in the country, uh, cities of all sizes, 5,000 to 500,000 to a million, there are filmmakers. There's local live theater in every community. There are local uh, photo exhibits of uh, photographers' work. There's uh, local oil and water paintings exhibited in every town. It's somewhat ironic that uh, something as American as movies is not on a local basis uh, made and then shown in the local theater, but that's not the case. And what I'm hoping to accomplish today is just to give you a bit of an awareness of what uh, local filmmakers are doing, what their aspirations and plans and, and uh, you know, what they've done in the past have, uh, has been, in hopes that we have a, a dialogue. Uh, this is Thomas Zuber and Kurt Strauss of uh, Struber Productions, Dan Hall. Um, you've played Ghost Stories 2 in Central State in Indianapolis. Jason Slingerland and Troy Smith from um, Coffee Shop Kings. And then on the end is John Otterbacher. He's working on a film called Riff Raff and will be playing in some of the theaters this summer at Portage. Um, kind of explain a bit about what you've done and where you think uh, uh, we as theater operators in these different 28 buildings we're operating uh, could be of help to you. Yeah, I, I think uh, I can't speak for everyone up here, obviously, but as an independent filmmaker, it's really um, important to me that we get our movies seen. Uh, it's incredibly difficult to do this outside of kind of internet, DVD. Those things are pretty easy for independent filmmakers now. Getting a DVD distribution deal um, is not that difficult, though getting one that actually makes you any money, I think, is pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but getting into theaters and getting audience to come out, the couple of experiences that I've had with it, um, To Live and Die in Dixie, which was a, a Grand Valley State University film. Um, what I'm trying to do, uh, my production company is Orange Chair Productions, the movie is Riff Raff the movie. Um, what we're trying to do is really work the online and viral angle. So we've been putting videos online, we have Facebook, we have MySpace, and we've gotten a pretty good response online. Um, you know, for us, for independent filmmakers, it's not really an option to spend money on marketing. So that's my biggest concern. These are publicity-driven theatrical releases. Publicity-driven. And when we come into the market of a theater, you know, I can work Chicago. I can work Grand Rapids. I can't work Portage. I mean, I can try, but I don't know anybody here. So it would be really great uh, for me as a filmmaker to know that if I'm bringing uh, my movie to your theater, if you guys as managers could help us out with that because we don't know any of the local press here. We don't know any of the media. We don't know how people come to the movies. Um, so that's, that's my biggest thing is just getting people to come out. But uh, any, any other publicity, you know, we had, they put the poster right by the ticket counter, which is nice. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's really hard to get the word out without advertising money. And most independent filmmakers they spend what little money they have on the movie, and there's not a lot, not a lot left to spend on advertising. So we had emails and flyers, and we were on the radio and TV, and we did get a lot of several good mentions of the Goodrich Theaters and Lansing Mall Cinema, so that was nice. In terms of things that the theater could do, um, we did show the trailer in the lobby, and that was nice. Uh, it was, I assume, in the newspaper ad, although I never saw it. Of course, it was on the online ticket uh, availability, and it was cool to see the name of the movie on the marquee when you came into the theater that night. It's also important, though, that we as filmmakers somehow get the, a weekend evening yeah. to premiere that. We wouldn't have done the numbers at the IMAX. We couldn't have sold it out four or five times in a row if, <coughs> on a Friday, Saturday. If we hadn't, if we were shooting on a Monday, Tuesday, we would have maybe had five people in the theater. The problem is, of course, you can't show it over a Friday, Saturday, and this time of the year we couldn't show it on a Sunday, so we knew that was going to hurt our attendance. The whole thing of the Friday, Saturday, Sunday blockout is obviously a big deal, and to have a movie screen those days would be pretty tough, um, and I don't know if it would mean paying twice as much or three times as much, but it would be nice if there was at least an option where you said, it's $100 to show it on this night, and if you want to show it on a Friday or Saturday, it's 250 or 175 or whatever that number would be. Or maybe it's not an option because of the, the big distributors. 
the question about the days a week that is really heavily uh, dictated by the the, film, the major film companies where uh, uh, they're rather uh, jealous of uh, the amount of uh, screen time that they have and, and the interruptions are, are principally of that consideration it's really not in the hundred dollars two hundred dollars that's really not the variable it's it's really our relationship with the Warner's Paramount, Sony Fox, and so on, Disney, and their temperament to uh, allow interruptions in advance. You took that experience. You were able to get those hundred email addresses from those people, and you put that into a, a database of people that like to come to independent films, and you took that same experience or same process, and every time someone came into this theater or the 28 theaters that you had in your chain, and that was a huge database. When the next independent guy who had no connection to this theater or this town came in here, you could plug into that database and mine it for the particular people that were sensitive or interested in those particular films. We have played off Blu-ray before. One of the movies, it looks beautiful when done properly, um, but we have had problems with audio as well, where we come in and do an audio test and it sounds great, and then somebody changes the audio the night of the premiere, so it goes from a stereo system to the surround system, and then all of a sudden you have ambient noise, the dialogue drops out. Yep. Yep. Um, we, it's, it's interesting, you'll come in and you'll test with one person, and everything will be good, and you do your due diligence, you come in in advance and test it, and then when you come back for the screening, somebody else is in the projection booth, and they like, oh, I'm gonna make this better for them, and they plug it in somewhere else, and all of a sudden, our audio sounds terrible, which makes us look really bad <laughs> as filmmakers. Uh, we put a lot of work into it, and a lot of people put a lot of time and energy into it. And when it doesn't show correctly, it's, it's really a personal thing for us and for the actors and for everybody really involved in the making of the movie. And a big problem is the technology, though it's trickled down to from Kodak and through the big studios and to the theaters, that technology hasn't trickled down to us independent filmmakers. Um, so anything we can do to kind of smooth out that process, have the same people there, um, but yeah. Projector, uh, you know uh, better than I what sort of projector was, but it wasn't as bright as in the big theater. And because we had done some treatment on the film, which was shot on video to make it look more like film, it was a little bit darker than it normally would have been. Uh, and it really looked pretty dark on the screen. It didn't look good at all. It was, it was so dark that I could I could barely watch it. <laughs> and uh, several people again commented that, you know, it's too bad you didn't use any lights in the movie. So that was disappointing. They were monkeying with a projector as the film was showing, and so you see the menu come up on the screen, and that is not good at all. <laughs> that's not good at all. We wanted to be put into the box office reportings because that's a, another form of legitimacy. Um, but we ended up being exhibition show A or something like that. And so we weren't reported to the box office. And there are places on the, there are places where uh, people report the earnings from one theater to the box office reportings. Yeah. Movie line, maybe a little bit, you know, one phone call would have taken care of that. Yeah. Rent track and EDI are very easy to get into and have your numbers reported as well as the title of the film. Yeah. So that would be a great feature yes. that would, I mean, you could show someone, hey, check it out, our movie was in the box office reportings. Mm -hmm. Hey, one theater or four theaters or whatever, X number of, of uh, things show up. It's another form of legitimacy. Uh, you know, it breaks down to earnings per theater. So if we have a theater like, well, let's say, of 500 people, and 500 people show up, well, the earnings, and then everybody, all the major blockbusters have lower numbers for the weekend, and they're shooting, they're, they're showing at 2,500 theaters then that actually bumps us up the scale of earnings per theater, which makes us look good, mm -hmm. and we want to look good. Yeah. Uh, and I just think it's wonderful that you guys are willing to do this, because frankly, you know, we don't always feel like we have a lot of options as independent filmmakers, and that you guys are taking the time to help us out. Sometimes, I, I, like the person on the screen, and when I started off, it sounds kind of like we're complaining. I mean, we're thrilled to be in theaters. Yeah. If you have ideas, we will, you know, exhaust ourselves trying to to accomplish those ideas and set goals for ourselves and we'll put in the man hours uh, we just you know any any ideas or any help you can offer us is, is a beautiful thing um, and I just want to say thank you again for for letting us well, come totally in here. You, you gentlemen have driven pretty good distances and involved yourself it, it is very much a reciprocal circumstance I, I, I wouldn't be doing this if you weren't doing what you're doing